Today I wanted us to go through the journey of taking a specification and do it uh, line by line, showing you how do I implement it in terms of Racket. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take from a specification down to code, implementing this evaluation notation, which is actually technically known as Big Step Operational Semantics, but it's just a technical name which you can ignore. Uh, but how do you do that? How do you implement that in Racket? So I want you to I want you to learn a bit of JavaScript. Of course, this is just a very uh, basic imperative language. We're not going to take care of object oriented at this point. We're simply going to implement a very small programming languages that has assignments. It has a while loop. It has a way to print out values, and it has a way to se sequ sequence uh, expressions. Oh, sorry, uh, instructions in this case. So usually we use instructions when they don't return a value. Uh, and you can see that in this in this language, nothing is being returned. So what you have, the only way to observe a value is by doing a print, right? So in this case, if I write this program, and this on the left hand side is valid JavaScript, which you can run. So what I did was I wrote it, I call it foo.js. And if I run it with my favorite interpreter, which is called node from node.js, if you run that, you it will print out numbers from 10 down to one. And you can see that because I'm initializing a variable to x, and then while x is not zero, um, I'm I'm running it. Uh, I'm running the body, which always prints out x um, and then updates, uh, decrements the value by one. So it prints first ten, and then nine, and then eight, and so on until x is zero. And when it's zero, it doesn't run this uh, loop. Okay, pretty simple. So this is the only language we have. And as you can see, with all these only these four instructions, we should be able to represent already some interesting programs. Um, so for E, I'm going to assume uh, the language of expressions that we start with in homework three. So these are uh, just numbers and Boolean operations on numbers. Uh, sorry, no Boolean operations. So just uh, decrement, uh, addition, multiplication, and division. I think those are the four operations we define. Uh, and the loop, does since we don't have booleans, the loop is just when x becomes zero, that re represents false. So therefore, the loop uh, ends. Uh, so if x is different than zero, which is true JavaScript semantics, then that's considered true, and it continues evaluating. Okay. So first of all, let me just show you uh, in in my uh, language what that means. So I implemented, as you might expect, the um, first. This is the AST of expressions from that I took from homework three. So nothing new here. Uh, numbers and all that. We don't need uh, lambdas. So I can actually remove that. No lambdas. I don't need vo uh, void either. Okay, so I just need numbers and I need variables and I need apply. It's the only thing I need. Hope I didn't break anything. Let me just run it. Okay, so as you can see, if I run this, uh, it will run, it will count from 10 down to one. That's just to convince you it produces the same output. Uh, so now let's look at the program I ran. And the program I ran was exactly the same program. But in my AST, it matches to this um, AST right here on the right hand side. So you can see the assign uh, is this assign. And then the while loop here. So the condition is x like here, and then the body. You can see that there are two instructions. So you have a sequence, and the first one is a log, right? Second one, you have an assignment, and here you have a function call. And the function you're calling is minus, and the operands are x and 1. Okay, so the right hand side is a logical representation of the left hand side. And you can see here, uh, I forgot to t tell you about the ST. Um, but first, let me show you. So here is the the code that I was sh that I'm showing you in the in the slides. Um, okay, so just to confirm, that's exactly this. And then let me just show you the AST. So the AST, we're going to have an assignment. So the assignment is here. So a variable and an expression, and then a while. So the while is here. So you have a, an expression in the body, expression in the body. And then the log just takes an expression. So the log just takes an expression. And the sequence takes a left and a right. So left and right. Okay. 
So I, I, we went through the syntax, nothing new. You're not actually expected to write the ST that's usually given, except for homework three, where you are supposed to, to implement uh, Booleans, right? But anyways, let's move on. So we have this program. And now what I want to show you is if I evaluate, so I implemented this function, j eval, right? And when I call it and I give this program, it produces exactly the same output, right? So what you're going to learn today is how do we implement this? Um, okay. So let's move on. Um, we saw this. So, okay. So what do we need? I want to introduce you to the semantics of this uh, language, micro JavaScript. Uh, and the semantics is given with this evaluation relation, which has two parameters, two input parameters, and one output parameter. So the input is going to be the M, this lower caps M is just the map, it represents the binder, so also known as the environment, but I, I wanted to give a different name so you don't get confused with homework five. Uh, so that's why it's called lower caps M. So this is just the variables and values. Uh, P is going to be your program, as uh, introduced in the previous slides. Uh, and M prime is going to be the output uh, variables and values. And why do you need that? Well, first of all, for two reasons, right? The first one is because this program doesn't have expressions, it's not an expression oriented language. Uh, so it, it has what we call instructions, right? Uh, where, oops, where each line is an ins instruction it doesn't return anything. And the only way to produce output is by printing out the screen to the screen, however, because we're using Racket, which is an immutable language. Uh, and I want to somehow communicate the changes of this assignment to the rest of the code, uh, then I need to return the new heap, right? Or sorry, the, the map. So the, the map is initially empty. And after this assignment, it has x assigned to 10. Right? And then whenever I update here, I need to update the map. So this map needs to be moved along whenever you do a change. So that's what this M prime output uh, reflects. So how do we implement this? Well, each input in the each in input of the relation becomes a parameter of my function. So in this case, J eval represents this relation, the evaluation, and it has two parameters, vars is M and P becomes prog. Okay. Uh, I also give you the this the signature so it says that the first thing has to be a hash table the second thing has to be a program um, and the result has to be a hash table because of this m prime you will notice that m prime because it's an output parameter is what's being returned therefore it doesn't show up here but it does does not show up as a parameter of the function but it does show up as a, a parameter of the signature you know the output parameter so what's being returned okay so uh, let's look at the first rule. The first rule is for uh, the assignment. So what we see is we have some input memory and we have an input program that is a single assignment. Okay. Um, and object, how do we implement this? Well, we go through, first of all, this is going to be a recursive function and each of these rules represents a branch in the conditional, right? So let me just show you very quickly. Here we go. This is J eval. Uh, and here is the conditional, and then you're going to have a branch per rule, okay, with one exception. So this is the rule for assignment, which means this is the branch of that uh, top level conditional. And what you can see is I have first thing, what is the condition being tested? Well, the condition being tested is the type of the, it, the program. In this case, notice that we are constraining the input. So we're saying here, that um, the program is not any program, but is in fact the assignment, right here in red, here, right here, uh, which means uh, there is some constraint and that's the condition that is being uh, uh, prefixed on the evaluation of this code, right? So I only run the code if I, uh, if this is true. Okay, so that's why this is the rule E assign. The rule is E assign because it's when the program is an assign. Okay, although the name is whatever you want to call it. The name of this label okay of the rule anyways let's move on so this is why you have this j assign in the first part of the code second thing you're going to have you notice there's a fraction right so there's stuff above the fraction and the the things above the fraction they're either uh defines they're going to be they're going to show up in record as defines or more conditions which you will see 
in a in a, in a slide in a few slides ahead. Uh, but for now, there's only define. So because there's 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 an evaluation going on here that represents a define. So this code represents this, right? This part, this uh, mathematical formalism represents this code. Um, so what is this? Well, this um, highlighted here is going to be the evaluation of expressions, uh, and it's exactly what you have in homework three, except that I actually need the values of the variables because now. Um, you know, x could be 3, so you do need to pass along the map as well. So there's an extra parameter. So this is an input parameter, this is another input parameter as a convention, you've already seen that in homework 4, sorry, uh, yes, no, homework 4. Um, so sometimes input parameters also show up as uh, uh, sub, how do you call this, things below or things above. Those are options for, for more input parameters. But V is definitely the output parameter. So what we're saying is if we evaluate E uh, with M, that results in a value V. Okay. So that's what this code is right here. Um, and then, so again, to recap, each line above becomes a define. And on the bottom, we see what is being returned. In this case, what's being returned is M, where we update. We've learned already that if M is a, a hash set, then... Um, or a hash table, you call hash set to represent this operation, the update. So in fact, that's what we're doing. So we're updating x, where x is the value. Uh, and x, how do we get x? Well, we call the field that represents the x. So what is the x in the assign? Well, that is the variable. So we call j assign var prog to get the x. Uh, so this is this x. You could also define x and then assign it to this. Um, and then what we do, uh, the V is obtained from this define, right? So on the right-hand side, you will see the variables. So we define a variable here. We use it here on the right-hand side. And vars is the input M as before. So in the, in the formalism, it's called M. But in the code, we called it vars, right? Because the function, um, the parameter we chose, was called vars. Okay. So we talked about the update, and we talked about the things above, and we talked about the difference between var and m, I mean, or the, the relationship between them. Okay. So we covered this rule. It, it explains how we should think about a sign or should implement it. And the idea behind it is that whenever you see an apply, what you do is you evaluate the body. It's exactly like a define. Evaluate the body um, and uh, assign it to x. So what we're doing is we're updating uh, the hash table to that effect. Okay, so log is very similar, and this is the rule for log. You also evaluate the expression. However, you do nothing to the heap, so it doesn't produce any side effect. And then there's this special function log that is just a way for us to communicate in the specification that we're going to use v somehow. Uh, it just represents to print it out to the screen. So if I want to evaluate a printing, what do I do is I evaluate the expression I get that value and that's what I print. So this code represents the first line, and then the second thing represents the second line, and finally M is what's being returned. So M is the input, actually this should be var, uh, but in the, in the shared script uh, it's fixed. So this should be vars, okay. Because that's the input, right? Um, and this is basically it. So now let's look at another rule. Now for sequence. So if we have sequence, what we do is we have the sequence where we run it, where we want to run P1 followed by P2. So the evaluation of that is very simple. Take the original memory, pass it to uh, P1, evaluate P1, you obtain some new variables and binders. Take that M, those M2, pass it to the second thing. So you're gonna thread the output as an input and P2 is going to exec execute with that so that it observes any side effects of P1. And then P2 produces some memory, uh, some hash table or some map called M3, which is what we return. Okay, so in the first line, you notice there's P1 and P2. So there's only two, two uh, premises, but there's four things. Why is that? Well, in this case, because it's, um, I just wanted to make the code a bit neater, and this is a matter of style. 
but basically I wanted to assign for each variable defined here, I want to define it in racket in as one line. So you can do so. So P1, what is that? It's the sequence left of the, the program, right? So that's P1. And P2 is going to be sequence right of program. So that is also a possibility. If you want to make your code a bit more step by step, you can do that as well. Uh, and then this is going to be a define. And then this part is also a define. Important part is to get the parameters all right. So M1 uh, represents vars and P1 again is obtained from this first define, um, which represents this. Uh, and then for this call right here, you have M2 and P2, M2 and P2, and the output is M3, output is M3. Okay, and then what you return is M3, therefore M3 right here. Okay, hopefully nothing too surprising. Uh, now we get to the while rule. And for a while rule, if you think about it, you have to have two rules. You have to have a case where the while loop, uh, the expression evaluates to zero, uh, which is when it terminates. And the second rule is when it uh, performs another step. So this is the rule where the expression evaluated down to zero. So we have this condition. We have a single condition, so that's going to be a single define. Okay. The, the, the fact that we t we're testing if it's a while, I hope it's already clear for you. So here, because we only have one precondition, that's what we have here. And then notice that we're checking if the value V, so notice that here it appears a zero, but in the code we have V, right? Because we cannot just say define zero, that, that would be redefining the value zero, which is kind of silly. That's not what we want to do. What we want to do is we just want to define it to some variable. And here, what the, the specification is saying is that we're doing some constraining. We're saying that the result of that has to be zero. But if you actually, but because we know that there's another rule, that just means that we're actually just testing that V and checking if it's zero. Okay, and then I'm going to relate at the end with homework four, for instance, where we also do something similar. So here we're checking if V is zero, then what we do, we return M, which is the input. So we're returning bars, which is the input. Otherwise, it's next slide. So this one is pretty easy. The not very obvious part is this condition, right? Because we are constraining the output, that means we need to check if the output matches the constraint. Okay, the fact that is zero. Okay, so we, if we look at the other rule, things will become a bit more clear. So we could also uh, have done before V and then had a condition V equals zero, and maybe that would be more explicit. So what we're saying here is that we evaluate the, if we evaluate that expression to V and V is different than zero, so that would be the else case, right? So this is the case where V equals zero, and the other rule is when V is different than zero. So if basically if we have two uh, different uh, conditions that you want to further check, what you will do is you will have two further rules rather than one very complicated rule. So I evaluate the expression and I get some V and that V is different than zero. So that means I have to do a, a and else. So this part is new. So that's what you're going to see in this else. Okay. So what am I doing? This is I'm defining M prime. So that's why I have define M prime. And what is the body is the evaluation of this. So that's what I have here. So let's see if it matches. Okay, so vars is M, as we know, so this is vars. And then notice that it's P space while. So what this is saying is that there's a sequencing, right? The way we represent sequencing is in letter, space, uh, whatever program follows. So, so that's the AST for that is J sequence, uh, where we put, actually, this is flipped, it should be prog and then the, the loop. Um, and then we evaluate the, um, the rest of the body. So first evaluate P, and then we evaluate the rest of the body, I'll fix that in the slides, don't worry. Um, and then what we do that returns an M prime, which is what we return. So that's why the final expression being returned is M prime. Okay. And finally, your code is going to be this, okay. which I'm going to show you right now. Uh, this is just a shortening just so it fits the, the slides. It's basically equivalent. I just remove the defines just so you can fix fit it in the in the single slide. So let me just make sure that the um, 
the sequencing is right. So this actually doesn't affect it because of the way the code works for this example. But this is what the spec is saying. So this is what we want to have. So if I run it, ah, actually, what did I do? Kill our racket. Okay, so this, let me think a bit. So I want to evaluate um, P. Actually, let me stop and continue. I'm really dumb. This code is right. <laughs> so this is the body of the, of the loop, right? So the body of the loop is P. So that's what's here. And then prog is going to be while, the while loop. So the original loop. And I got confused because I saw while, so I thought it was referring to this while here. So it's just my eyes play the trick on me. So this is exactly correct. You want to evaluate first the body of the loop, in this case P, and then you evaluate the loop. If you did it the other way around, you would never update the variable, and therefore the loop would hang forever. And that's why when I reordered the code, um, these two instructions, um, that's why this order matters. So if you try to therefore have a loop first and then its body after, you would get an endless loop as you would never, uh, uh, if, if the thing lets me do, ah, okay. It crashed. Yeah. Cause that's, that's incorrect. You don't want to have that. Okay. So this makes more sense now. It's confused how it was working. Okay. So this is the body of the loop and this is the, the rest of the loop, the, the loop again. Um, and the program is ex ex correct. So sequence body of the loop and then the loop. Um, and yeah, I hope you, you went through all the, the cases and it kind of makes sense. This is different than what you're, um, that you, what you've seen so far, but the way of, uh, what you're expected to do in homework four and five is exactly this is not really think too much about why the rules work. And I do hope you do find time to think about why the rules work and why they're defined in that way. But it's more to give you the the homework. What is measuring is really how do you take the spec and convert that into code? Uh, right? So each of the conditions become the define all that stuff. That's what I'm asking you to do. So this is the final code. And I'm going to share this, of course, and you can play with it. Uh, so finally, I wanted to go back to homework four, uh, and you will notice and homework five and uh, as well, and you will notice that there is a, a case where we have a constraint on the output of um, one of the evaluations, and that is in the apply. So you may be wondering, oh, do we actually need to write the conditional for that? And the, ans the answer is, um, well, you could, but you don't actually need to. And the reason is because there's no other rule that tests for the other cases. And the reason that there's no other rule is because any other case would be incorrect. So when you're calling a function, it has to be a lambda, right? It has to be code that runs. Uh, so there is no other case. And therefore, the condition would only have a uh, condition, right? It would check if this is a lambda, then do this. Otherwise, throw an error. And we're not really checking, we're not really interested in invalid inputs. Um, so you don't actually need to, to write that code in your solution. And therefore, you can just assume it's a lambda. Right? So basically, in short, you only do that test if there are multiple rules for the same uh, syntactic element, right? In this case, there's only one rule for apply, therefore you don't need to do that check. And that is basically it. That's what I wanted to go through. Uh, step by step, how do you implement this very small language? Um, as you can see, only assignment, loop, printing, and sequencing. Uh, and what you have at the end is a code that actually runs and you can write different examples. Uh, and play around with it. So I hope this is helpful. Um, and in the next uh, video, I'm going to cover, sorry about the flipping, uh, garbage collection and the relationship with our homework.